What's going on YouTube? Burlington Northern HO fan here, and today we've got another video on a locomotive. Today though, we're going to hopefully repair it, slash put it together, and we'll go from there. And it's actually going to be the video that you guys probably saw on the last video I just uploaded. The DD40. It is going to be our new project. We're going to get out of the parts that are in the box, we are going to try to put this thing back together and refinish this kit and get it running properly and great around the layout. So let's hope that we can do that. First thing we're going to do is open up this box and we're going we're gonna to get all the pieces laid out on the table here. So we've got our instruction manual here. So there we go. Now, cool thing about this locomotive, there are three different versions of this style of locomotive. Two of them are real, and one of them is not. This is the one that is not real. The, the original idea for this locomotive was the GP38, or no. I believe it, no, it was uh, GP35. So what they wanted to do is they had put two GP35s together, two units, two motors, and they made a DD35. And then they made the DD40 Centennial, DD40AX Centennial, and that is the still holds the record for the most powerful diesel locomotive ever made. This is a DD40, which is a pretty much has got the same setup as the Centennial, but it's got the D it's got the DD35 cab, so it's not accurate. But the, what makes it cool is this is one of the only things that Athern made that's not real. A lot of the things that Athern made were very realistic. This was one of the ones that was not. So it makes it cool in that respect. But Anyway, enough of the history lesson from what I remember. If I'm wrong about any of that, please let me know. I'm, as far as I know, that's what I'm pretty sure that's the correct story on the whole thing, but I could be wrong. But correct me if I'm wrong. So, anyway, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this envelope, this bag, I shouldn't say envelope, and we're going to empty out all the pieces. So, we've got two coupler cover boxes, two coupler covers, and two horn hook couplers. And then we've got our handrails here, and we've also got some lights, which I do believe go up in here. So, actually, it looks like these might be a replacement, because it looks like they're already in. But the first thing we're going to do is take the shell off the locomotive because right now they can be done separately. So, because we're going to be painting these handrails, so we're going to do that separately. So, we're going to take the shell off the chassis. So, we're just going to do that. Be nice and gentle with these body mounts. Give me one second, I'll get these. There we go. These body mounts can be finicky sometimes. And you have to be careful with them because they're very... It's just plastic on metal. They can break. So. So let's... Get this last one. There we go. Now she's out. Alright, so now our shell has been separated from the humongous chassis now the other thing about these locomotives there was an option for a one motor or a two motor this is a one motor locomotive but you can see that this is still a piece for the two motor because it still has the connection to put a motor here so really I can actually turn this into a two motor if I wanted to I just have to change drive shafts around and get rid of this piece 
So, I believe. I could be wrong. No, I think... No, that looks right. Yeah. So yeah, all I have to do is get rid of this piece, which looks like it's a screw on the bottom, and use the same contact piece that I just kind of popped off there by accident, and the drive shaft here would have to be changed. But other than that, this should be a straight, pretty simple, straightforward to go dual motor if I want to. But, so now... We've got the locomotive open. It looks like there is a little bit of oil in the gearboxes, but we'll have to take these apart, which they aren't that hard to take apart. But so we'll do that. But that will be later. Right now we're focusing on handrails and the shell of the locomotive. So we've got a couple more pieces in here that we're going to take out of here. And then we've got the long handrails that we need to get out that are taped to the bottom of the box. Let me just get this taped out of here. Time has not been great today. It's very rusty looking, which is not great, but I can fix that. It won't be too hard to fix. So let's actually make sure they still fit. Move those to the side real quick. And we're just gonna kind of do one of these. So this side should go in over here. Over here like this. Yeah, they look like they're correct. Let's look at the other one. We should be on the this side. Uh, it looks like that these have actually been destroyed, which sucks. That's unfortunate. Anyway, we can do something. We can get some spare ones of these. I know where we can get some of these. So we can replace those. But those look like they're not going to work. However, the handrails, the these pieces, they look like they're just fine. You should be able to just shove it right in here. Yeah, those will be fine. So we can use those. But while we're here, let's get the first thing done here. Let's put our couplers in. Why not? So we got our box here. We've got our coupler. Now, later on, right now, I'm out of the knuckle couplers. I can upgrade this to knuckle couplers later. It's very easy to do so, and I most likely will be doing that later on. But right now, we want this locomotive to just be put together, and that's going to be a pain. Right now, we just want this locomotive to be put together, so we're just going to uh, put these on. This part just keeps popping off. That's nice. Okay, we've got one coupler on. It's nice and springy. And now we've got to put the other coupler on, which is going to be over here. 
Just like so. Very simple. Very simple install. However, the spring on that side does not look like it wants to work, but that's that doesn't matter too much. As long as it's actually in there and it can pull, that's all that we care about. So, now that's in. So right now, what we can do now is go ahead and take this, these apart, and service it, which looks like it might need, the commutator looks okay, so we'll do that, we'll take these apart, get that out of there. We're going to take our contact piece off. Ah, that might have been an issue and the reason why it may have been not running so well. Yeah, look at that. We got a bunch of handrails stuck to our motor. Alright, let's do, take care of that. This also does not look great. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about, but let's see if we can just get the locomotive apart here and get the trucks off. So, I'm going to take these off, and that should allow me to drop the boxes out of the locomotive. Now I should be able to just take the gearbox out of locomotive like so and now I have full access to the gearbox that actually looks like it rolls pretty well I don't think I'm gonna have to do much with that but let's do the same on the other side let's get the uh, worm gear off the locomotive That time the drive shaft came with me, but oh, you know what? No, that's supposed to happen. So okay, we're okay. Worm gears off. We do the same thing. We'll get our our gearbox out of our locomotive there. So now we've got access to this one. Yeah, I mean these look like they roll. These look like they roll pretty nicely. So we're not going to need too much oil. I'm just going to put just a little bit more. Because it doesn't look like there was much in there to begin with. So we'll start there. And then we'll do a little bit of that. Okay. I'm happy with that. Then we'll take our worm gears here and hopefully have them not fall apart on me like that one just did. We'll take our worm gear and we'll put some grease, just a little bit of grease in the worm gear, not a lot. Just, just a teeny little bit. Roll that around. Okay. We'll take our gearbox. Shove it back up in there. And then we'll 
we'll take this guy and put him back in the drive shaft the proper way, which is like so. If I, if I do there we go if I do that and then put the truck in that might be better Okay, now we'll shove the truck back in. It's gonna be a pain. It's gonna be a big pain. Give me a second. I will put this back together. Okay, that one's back together. That was a pain to get it to line up. I actually had to bend this piece to get it to line up properly. So now we're going to be on to the front truck. Let's do the same thing and put that one back in. Okay, that one was a lot easier. So now we've got that back together. Make sure it spins all nice and good. Yes, it does. Okay, let's put the contact back on. Lost our light bulb, but that's okay. It didn't work anyways. So we can get a different one. Or we can swap it and get a better system. Maybe get an LED system for this locomotive. Okay. Contacts back on. Make sure these two aren't touching. Like they are right now. Just do something like that so they don't touch. Okay, and now let's take it over the track and make sure it runs and see if it actually runs a little nicer than it did. All right, so I've got the thing going about half throttle right now. I believe it's still got some weird electrical issues. It doesn't like the corners too much. So we might have to figure something out with that. But, yeah, see it slows down over there. Other than that, it's a good start. But anyway, I'm going to leave this part one of this video here. I will take the next video. We'll start putting the handrails together for it. And then I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.